Hello everyone and welcome to this roundup of all seven LEGO Racer Circuit Champions built as they appear in the 3D animation intro for the game. Since we have all seven of the Circuit Champions we will of course be starting with Captain Redbeard. Now Captain Redbeard, as with all the other minifigures from this lineup of cars, is from the late 90s from the Pirates theme. He was featured in some of the smaller pirate sets and most of the big ones and of course has a peg leg which is not really seen that often in LEGO sets nowadays. It did come out with the Pirates theme a few years ago, but not in the old brown colour. It was instead released in the metallic. Since I was the, not the creator of these specific shapes and styles of these cars, I will only be talking about what the, cr the original creators probably envisioned when they made these cars. So Captain Redbeard's card obviously looks like sort of a more piratey theme with the treasure chest in the front and what I assume the exhausts are meant to sort of simulate cannons and then the steps on the side, the uh, the ropes on the sides of the ships and then of course the Jolly Roger flag at the back. Captain Redbeard's appearance throughout the development of LEGO races didn't change that much from when he was first built. Originally these yellow slope pieces here didn't exist and this step was actually one stud higher. Now this would have made building this a bit easier if it had stayed like that because unfortunately I have to make the ride height one stud higher than actually is in, in the intro because these steps will scrape along the floor otherwise because of these extra little notches that they have at the bottom. Captain Redbeard's model from the intro doesn't actually differ that much from the one you drive in the game. Apart from the ride height being possibly a little bit shorter, there is no other change and he's remained mostly similar other than like some of the other cars. Moving on to the second circuit champion, here we have King Kahuka. Now his car was kind of difficult to build from the intro because he's only seen through the beginning and then he crashes shortly after the beginning of the video but luckily there are some close-up shots such as when the 3 2, 1 countdown is happening you get a good shot of about if the camera was sort of where my fingertip is showing this area of the car so to build the sort of detailed area here wasn't so bad for King Kahuka and there's a, a good shot from behind which shows that the bricks that are usually here in the in-game model are in fact missing on the 3D animation model. The only other difference between the animation model, which this is based off, and the in-game model is this piece here with the feather plume on it is actually one stud forwards. I'm not quite sure why they made this change, but that seems to be the only noticeable difference other than possibly a few colour tweaks from the 3D animation model. Now there was one bit I couldn't replicate in real bricks because they didn't exist. These front bits here in the animation model they have combined this clip with this jumper piece so it's basically a clip in the middle of a 1x2 plate and that would actually be quite a useful piece to have but I think they did this to lower the poly count on the pieces because otherwise they would have to model this bottom piece and then this piece so they just sort of fused the two together to make animation a bit smoother they also did the same with this piece, except obviously it's in the old light grey colour. King Kahuka's car design changed quite dramatically throughout the development of LEGO Racers. His car design was overall the same, with this same sort of stone face piece being on the back. It's a little less obvious to see the face here, because originally there would have been two headlight brick pieces here to make up the eyes, because this back piece is based on a statue headpiece that was featured in one of the Islander sets from which King Kahuka is from the theme. Now originally this whole headpiece as it appears in the sets was on the back of his car but to sort of minimize the requirement for the amount of bricks for his car they just sort of simplified it to this design and then in the game they do have the bricks here as I said earlier but I don't quite, I'm not quite sure why they don't have them in the 3D intro model. It's rather quite puzzling, but maybe it's just for simple cases of rendering. Moving on to the champion of Circuit 3, here we have Basil the Batlord. Now Basil's car was a little difficult to build due to the low quality of the animation for the intro and the fact that most of his car is black. One, one piece in particular was this back piece here, which was difficult to see. There was a camera angle of him drifting through a field, and then you see Gypsy Moth crash in the distance over here. and. This slope piece was very barely visible. All I could see was this one line, so for a while I was sort of puzzled as to which, pi which piece this was. But luckily they kept the in-game model quite similar to the 3D animation model, so 
the in-game model revealed to me what that piece was, so I was able to build it. The rest of it is identical to how it looked in the intro. I'm not quite sure how they would have done this front connection piece. I'm assuming it must have been the same as how I've done it here, because really, this height and distance away from the front wheels, which I calculated, really this build method is the only one that could possibly be used in this scenario. Now, like King Kahuka, Basil the Batlord's car changed dramatically throughout the development of LEGO Racers. In fact, his first car didn't even have four wheels, it was a, tr it was a tricycle. You can actually see pictures of this on my Flickr account, where I have built his Alpha car in a LEGO Digital Designer, and yes, that's Alpha. He had his this sort of car in the beta, but the very earliest pictures in the development of LEGO Racers show his car could be completely different from this. After it was changed to this overall design, it didn't change that much throughout the development. As we move on, we come to Circuit Champion 4, Johnny Thunder. Personally, my favorite character in the whole of the LEGO themes. And I had a great time building this one because he was the most challenging, definitely, because of the way he's built. A lot of the underside and really the back and front aren't shown a whole lot throughout the intro. And in particular, this front bumper piece was very difficult to decide how it was made, but thanks to the animation right at the end, you can see that there is in fact a line in between this top piece and this bottom piece. In the game, his front bumper is actually like this. There is no gap, because it's just a plate and a plate. But thanks to the well, freeze framing the intro over and over, I was able to decipher that this actually probably looked like this when the original animators built these. So this was in fact a plate in a plate upwards instead of outwards. His vehicle uses one of the original Adventurer's vehicle base plates with just a black steering wheel and that would be expected with a, a character of this theme. One little build flaw that J Johnny Thunder's car has is these back booster pieces. You can see a gap right here. This is caused by these pieces actually hitting these studs on the vehicle base piece. And now there's not really much that can be done about this because this, the build height of this back piece is correct for the intro. These booster pieces are directly on top of this slope piece. So to keep this as true to the original animation as possible, you do have to have this teeny little gap. I mean, it's it's not noticeable. One other downfall is if you, if you press pretty hard, the back end pops off and apparently his hat pops off as well, by me. Other than that, the rest was fairly simple. The back lights, quite easy to see at the beginning where the camera pans round to all of the back of the cars. It took me a little time to notice that these headlight bricks in here were in fact black instead of light gray like happened before. I just noticed in the animation that there was no color in between the the grates of this grill piece. So I was like, oh, that must they must be black. And then also I originally had the steering wheel as being gray instead of black, but during one of the passing shots for Johnny Thunder, I noticed that the wheel, the steering wheel's base had no color to it, so I thought that must be black. His car design didn't really change that much throughout the development of the game. When it got to this sort of stage, it didn't change that much. There are some promo shots which actually show Johnny Thunder driving Baron von Baron's beta car, but this was incorrect as every early screenshot of LEGO Racers during development doesn't show Johnny driving Baron's car, it shows him driving this car with some minor alterations. So he is one of the ones which didn't go through such a big change during the development of LEGO Racers. Speaking of which, here we have Baron von Baron, champion of Circuit 5. Baron's car design was very easy to build through from the animation because of how close up he appeared at the beginning and pretty much throughout the whole intro. There's one piece, however, which is not the right colour technically, and that is the base of the steering wheel, which for some reason the animators made tan instead of grey, which makes more sense because light grey actually existed as a colour, and as we all know, the steering wheel has never been made with a base of being tan. So that's the only piece on this car which is not correct to the intro, but obviously that can't be helped due to the fact it doesn't exist. Now Baron's car shares some design features similar to Johnny Thunder's, of course, using the Adventurer's vehicle base, this time in old dark grey. And of course, being that these are all accurate to 1999 colours, all of the colours on these cars are old grey and old dark grey. So that's why they have the sort of uh, less bluey appearance of bluish grey, obviously, hence the name bluish grey. Now there's one piece on this car which I found in my own collection while building, 
and I think it is old grey, but I really can't tell because it's it's a very strange in-between colour. This piece here, the 1x2 with a Technic pin on the side, I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick this up, but it, it's very lightly different from this bottom piece. And I checked it against a light, uh, sorry, a dark bluish grey piece, and it was too sort of browny grey to be light, uh, bluish grey, so I've got no idea what the hell that is, whether it's a, an error mold or maybe they started mixing light bluish, uh, sorry, dark bluish grey with old dark grey during the moulding process of this piece. I don't really know, but. It's kind of unique how it's a, a sort of in between, so I keep it on this just because I don't really need to go out and buy one because it's a close enough pick, uh, close enough color to the rest of the car. Now, at first, when I first built this LVD, I didn't notice that there were these tail light pieces on the 3D animation model, but thanks to a video that was found online that was just called uh, Lego Racers TV, I assume it was a advert for Lego Racers. And this showed a very clear picture of Baron von Baron's car from the back. Now this TV spot is a bit odd as it is just a five second or so clip of Rocket Racer shooting a cannonball towards Gypsy Moth and Baron von Baron who are fighting to get to the finish line. And this is the same finish line which is actually the start line of the intro. Now Baron von Baron's car to get to this stage actually didn't change that much from his Alpha car. The front is more or less the same, it's just been sort of squished up a bit, and then, but the back has been completely changed. Originally, Baron von Baron's car had some adventurer's aeroplane side pieces towards the back. It kind of looked like a pickup truck, if I'm honest. And I have pictures of this on my Flickr account, if you would like to see it. I've built him, built his beta car in LDD. I do have the pieces to build his car in real bricks, but there are some pieces I'm missing I have the old adventurous aeroplane pieces. As a matter of fact, here they are. Just like this, four, four wide on the back. And they sort of just, it looked like this basically, had this on the back instead of this. Now here on this post was stood a camera, one of the old cameras that came with the adventurous sets. I do have a camera for that, but as I said before, I don't have all of the pieces quite to build the front of his car. Now something that's quite odd with his beta car is that the front seems to have no logical attachment. Basically think about it like this, this front piece here, where you can see that these are headlight bricks, on that model there are headlight bricks in a row and then there's another row at the bottom, except they're not headlight bricks, they're normal brick thickness with studs on the front and yes there are pieces that exist like this but they are one brick on top of the other but with no piece underneath and this piece on the top there's no obvious connection to the body so I think when they made this model they just had that piece float there so I'm trying to work I think I did work out a way to get it to not change the appearance so much and sort of have 1999 building pieces because I don't want to use any pieces that didn't exist before 1999 to make these as accurate to the era as possible. Here we have the more odd looking of the seven, Circuit Champion 6, Gypsy Moth. Now her car is fairly similar between the intro model and the game model, but with a few minor colour and part differences. During the intro, her car model actually switches between her finished model, which is this, and her beta model, which is ever so slightly different in that the side here actually has two pieces like this, one facing this way, one facing that way, but they're both the same old dark grey as the rest of the car. And then this piece has actually moved one stud back, and instead of these pieces coming down to the side, it was a 2x2 two two slope piece like this facing forwards. Now I've also built Gypsy Moth's beta car, and you can see that on my Flickr page, along with the other two. The most difficult thing about building her was the wheel spacing because in the intro it's sort of low quality in the fact that they used very heavy motion blur because the video was originally only 15 frames per second. So to make it seem as though the cars were moving a lot smoother than they did, they had some pretty damn heavy motion blur. And if you pause the video you'll see, like for example, a car would be here and then here and then here and then here and then here over and over in each frame just to produce that smoother motion so the spacing on the wheels was a little difficult to get because of that and originally I had built her chassis to have 
just two one by one Technic bricks holding her wheels on. But after every time I kept pushing her car down, the wheels popped off. I ended up using a one by two Technic brick with two holes. And so, as you can see here, there's a Technic brick holding these two together. And this makes it so that if I were to press down on her car, the wheels won't pop off and she has a nice sturdy build. Now Gypsy Moth herself is actually from a line called Insectoids, which I personally hadn't heard of until I started searching for her to build the car. Now unfortunately the one I got is a bit... she's a, got a little dent on her face and a little scratching on her, on her gold eye mask. But this was the best I could get and unfortunately she does offer quite a high price because of how rare she is. I've been trying to go about getting her in a complete set that's either missing a few pieces but has all the minifigs or maybe one that's cheap because I, I mean I don't want to don't want to pillage a complete set just to get her. She's a little difficult to get hold of but if you can find her just in a bunch of pieces then that's that's the best w way to get these really. And of course finally here we have Circuit Champion 7 Rocket Racer. Well, Rocket Racer's car, because unfortunately Rocket Racer was never produced as a real model, and as a result, I only have this of him. His legs and his helmet. And yes, that is bloody annoying, because it would have been so much easier if he had existed as a real minifig, because now I'm going to have to go through the process of trying to get some decals to put on his helmet, on his legs, and on the front of his car. Well, the front of his car probably is not so bad, but having to put stickers on the entire figure... It's a little annoying, but there are some instances in LEGO's history where they have made figures for specific things and they haven't ex actually existed in real life. Now Rocket's car, obviously, the most easy to build, just because he is featured heavily throughout the intro. And he is also very, very similar to the in-game model, and the only difference here is the ride height. I don't know quite why they made the ride height so low on the in-game model compared to the intro model, but... I guess it's just to make his car look a little more sleek, because honestly you'd think that really this should be a bit of a lower ride height. His wheels are also sort of a mix between grey and black. They're sort of black out outside and then they, on the inside they have sort of grey details. So it's, it's a bit of a mix between how the animation modelers did it and then how the game modelers did it. Now when other people replicate Rocket's car they have pretty much exactly what you see here because of how easy it is to build and how... Close up you see all of the individual panel lines such as, or sorry, plate lines as you see here. So it's easy to determine how many plates are in the back, the thickness of the back piece, and basically the overall build is just fairly simple. So he's, he's the most successfully replicated of the seven. Now the one piece that doesn't exist unfortunately in the proper colour is the front piece. And it's quite a big noticeable piece, but luckily... It was made in black, so I can make this as close closer to the game model rather than the intro model. The whole body obviously is intro model, but the windshield is game model because it was black. And they probably didn't want to try and use the computing power to generate a transparent piece for the front. So it's although his car is a bit of a mix between the two, it's still worth it to have have it in black because it at least makes the car look overall complete and just in general better to look at. And that's it for the LEGO Racers Champion Roundup video. Hope you enjoyed seeing individual looks at all seven cars. It's a little easier than clicking on 14 different videos. I've got videos showing them and then how to build them so rounding it all up in one video is a little easier. If you want to build these I have seven building videos for each car. They're only about a minute long each car only has about 50 pieces or so between them. There are some which have a few more. You can check out those videos if you do wish to build these yourself. As always, my Flickr and Instagram accounts are linked in the description below. And then, actually recently, I have a few pictures of my LEGO Hogwarts Express as it looks now in 8 wide converted from 7 wide. They're just LDD screenshots at the moment. I have not done that to the physical locomotive, but I may do it at some point. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.